What's going on guys? We're back to season two of NHL 24 Washington Capitals franchise mode series. Thank you so much for the first episode. We got over a thousand likes, which is just insane. If you wouldn't mind leaving a thumbs up on this one as well. I'd really appreciate it. Next year, I'll show you guys who won the Stanley Cup the first season. Unfortunately, it wasn't us. I was trying to push there for Obi to get a second Stanley Cup, but the National Predators actually won it, which honestly, I would say is a good sign for us. Nationals team's pretty mediocre, similar to ours. So if they can win it, there's no reason why we can't either. This year is probably like our last decent chance to win Obi the Cup. Next year, you know, depending on what the team's looking like with Gavin McKenna in the draft, it might make more sense to start the rebuild. So, um, as you guys can see, right here, the team, Ovechkin, Strom, Kane on the first line and a plus five. I signed Patrick Kane literally just to play with Ovechkin. Obviously a great playmaker. Always most likely going to go down as the best goal scorer ever to play in the NHL. So, um, hopefully that duo will actually pick it up this year. Last season, I mean, Ovi had 85 points. I think Kane had like uh, 80 as well. Also, too, if you guys are wondering about the goal record, Obi currently sits at 870. So he needs 24 goals to tie Gretzky's record, 25 to break it. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on that and uh, making sure we can actually capture that in game. And sorry, Patrick Kane had 75 points last year, 52 assists. So hopefully, even more assists for Ovechkin this season. Second line there, Wilson Kuznetsov Bertuzzi. Definitely a tough line to play against. Uh, third there, you got McMichael now in the NHL, 83 overall, playing with Backstrom and Mantha. Fourth line, you got Oshie, Dowd, Lapierre. So you know, the forward group is like decent, but definitely would like, you know, a bit more star power if we could. Defensively here, Fairberry Carlson top pair is not too bad. We got Barry who traded for last season, playing with Sandine on the second pair, with Bertuzzo and TVR on the bottom. Goaltending wise, Kemper still our starter, Luke in there backing him up. And I'm not gonna bother showing you guys the special teams quite yet, as there's a trade I'm hoping to make that'll definitely shake this team up a little bit. Um, AHL wise, Moshechenko on the first line, Phillips and Clark. Uh, you got Kovalenko there. I feel like AHL team, they actually won their conference, I want to say, last season. So, should be good again. Perez here, we actually drafted second round 2024. He's already 77 with a few X-Factors. Like, this guy could be a beast in the future. The rest of the defense isn't too bad. Goal team wise we actually signed Rodriguez, 79 overall. So, pretty happy about that. Now, the big trade I want to make, guys, is actually with the Philadelphia Flyers. As you can see there, they got Couture and Atkinson and Lawton all on the block. Uh, their status is a seller. Surprisingly, though, they actually signed Lindholm this summer, one of the best free agents, even though they were a seller. So when people say it doesn't make sense when I do that, apparently the AIGMs do it as well. Now, I actually want to get Couturier, Atkinson, and Hathaway from the Philadelphia Flyers. So a big trade here. Uh, Couturier would immediately be our first line center. 8-8 overall. Also very good defensively. He could play, you know, the first power play, the first PK. Just do everything for us. He is making 7.7 .7 for the next six years. But honestly, after the next couple of years, we're going to have a ton of cap space rebuilding. So it doesn't really matter. Atkinson here would definitely, you know, help our top nine. 85 overall sniper. Hathaway would kind of be a better fit, I think, on our fourth line than TJ Oshie currently is. Speaking of Oshie, he's a guy I'd be looking to trade. He's making almost six million. He's only 82. He's playing on the fourth line. Again, Hathaway's cheaper, probably about as effective. And now with Oshie, I'm trying to make a big change on this team. Finally giving Kuznetsov his wish and trading him away. If you guys don't know in real life, I think he's asked for a trade twice. So he'll be involved. 84 overall, making 7.8 million. He sold offensively there with like passing and whatnot, but. Uh, not the greatest defensively, plus he's playing like second line for us. And then the last guy is actually Backstrom. He's been on the team forever, so I feel bad. But he's currently making 9.2 as our third line center. Last season, he only had 40 points. It just is not good enough. So that's kind of the basis for this trade. Now, we'll actually have to retain salary, I think, on Nick Backstrom to make it go through. We're also going to have to add, you know, a pick and a prospect. But I'm fine with it as long as it's not one of our best guys. Uh, just, again, give us one more chance here at the Cup. And actually, after retaining 50% on Backstrom, I also had to retain... 500k on Kuznetsov. Otherwise, Philadelphia would actually be over the salary cap max. So with those guys, I know we have to add, wow, this year we only have a first, third, and fourth. So looking like a second next year, um, I think we'll probably be worse than the Islanders. I don't know. Islanders second round pick. The value is still on Philadelphia's side. So we're going to have to give them something decent to essentially give us Couturier because I feel like, you know, Axe and Hathaway don't have too, too much value. I'm not going to be Catton or Leonard, though, but we're going to have to give them somebody. Honestly, guys, I'm thinking the player is going to be Chesley here. As we've already got two other right-hand defensemen that are better than him. Iorio there, 77, only a year older. Uh, Perez is 77, two years younger. So we throw Chesley in there. With a second, the value is now pretty equal. I think it's actually a little bit on our side. And again, the big get here is Couturier. We'll have a legit first-line center. Atkinson's an upgrade on Kuznetsov or Backstrom. And then Hathaway, of course, solid fourth-liner. Let's see what the Flyers say here. Trades rejected. The values isn't there whatsoever. Okay. I mean, we're trying to be good this year. Do we risk giving up a first round pick this year? I think that would be that'd be very aggressive. Alright guys, so I gotta be confident in the team this season. We're not trying to tank, we're trying to win. So hopefully this first round pick's a late one. And I'm actually trying to get back to Flyers second, which hopefully will be an early second, in which case we're not dropping back too much. Will they do the trade at this point? Obviously a little bit risky, but you gotta take risks sometimes. 
Trade still rejected. If they're not willing to give us a second, maybe they'll do a third and a fourth instead. Trades still rejected. Oh my goodness. I feel like we need at least a third round pick if we're giving them the first. And they still say no. They said a bit off. Okay. I'm trying to get the most I possibly can out of this. So let's try a fourth and a fifth. I think they'll say yes. No. Okay. So we get a fourth round pick back. I mean, it's something. Yeah, they say yes. So that's a risky trade, as I mentioned. But I think it makes our team a lot better. We also still have $5 million there in cap space, which we can use at the deadline. Still have a few picks this year. You know, we could probably move, you know, somebody at the deadline that's like maybe not too great. That's maybe like an AHL player or something. We just want to get an extra pick or someone on an expiring deal. Hopefully this works out for us. All right, guys. So after that massive trade we made, I just went through and edited the lines. I feel like our team looks a lot better now, which obviously it should. We gave a first round pick. So the first line is now Ovechkin, Kachuri, Kane. That's obviously a big improvement. Second line there as well. Now Atkinson, Strom, Bertuzzi. Just overall the top six is so much better. In the third line there, you got Mantha, McMichael in the middle now, and Tom Wilson. And then the fourth line is Hathaway, Dad, LaPierre. Obviously Hathaway returning to the Capitals. You can, you can see him already wearing a Capitals jersey in his headshot. Uh, defensively though, there is no change. Hopefully that defense is good enough for us. Obviously no change in the goaltending. So right here you guys can see power play one. I think Kachuri, of course, so good in the faceoff circle. Win the draws to Ovi, then he can just clap him home. Hit that uh, goal record. Power play two even, I think, actually looks very solid as well. PK one even, Kachuri, of course, like I mentioned, such a good defensive player, so it really improves that. Tom Wilson's out on the PK there. Uh, I got Strom, Bertuzzi, Dowd, Hathaway, the three man, of course, led by Kachuri. I think he'll be a big part of this team. Personally, I felt like, you know, back from Kuznetsov were good passers, but that was kind of all they were really good for. So that trade definitely changed the team up a lot, but hopefully for the better. In terms of the AHL, I think the forwards are the same, but uh, defense there, the bottom pair got a little bit worse because, uh, of course, did trade away that one guy. So we'll see, you know, whether or not this works out for us. Again, a bit of a risky move. Also, too, Basham was wearing an A, so now we actually got on Tom Wilson. You guys can let me know whether or not you agree with that. I'm just trying to think, you know, what players have been on the Capitals the longest, and I'm pretty sure Tom Wilson will be the next guy up. In terms of the preseason here, you guys can see we're 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. Katrina's at a point per game with 6-6, six and six. so I will take a look here at our ratings heading into this season. We've got 95 offense, 90 defense, and 84 goaltending, so hopefully that's good enough to find a playoff spot. Let's get started. And we just got straight over here, guys, from the Kraken. Kevin LeBanc for a second and a fourth. Definitely saying no to that. I feel like our team's, you know, solid now until the deadline. And then we'll decide what to do once we're there. Christian Dvorak for a second and a third. Again, saying no, but not a terrible offer. We actually have a hot start to the year. We're 6-1-2. and 7-1-2. So hopefully keep this going. And it's kind of funny, guys. The Flyers want to give us their last player on the block. Scott Lawton for a second and a third. We'd have, like, no picks left at that point, though. So... I'm gonna say no. Uh, a couple weeks away now from the, like the end of December here. We're rolling, like we're playing so well. 18, seven and seven. As I say, that we get a loss, which always happens. But a couple more wins. 28 and seven here at the end of December. This team's honestly exceeded my expectations even after the trade. Uh, we're currently second though in the division. The Blue Jackets there, 50 points. Geez, uh, they really came alive. But 47 points, like cannot be upset with that at all here. I'll take a look at the leading scorer, Ovechkin. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, that was so close. I like completely had a brain fart there the first couple months. I forgot I was supposed to be checking his goals. He's got 20. So if he puts out four goals in a game, like we have to check honestly each next game now because he's four goals away from tying Gretzky's record. How insane is that? Uh, he's got 43 points on the year. He wants it over a point per game by a lot. AHL wise, Kovalenko also over a point per game. The AHL team is first in their division. Oh my goodness, I didn't expect them to be doing that good. So uh, both teams off to a great start. And like I said, Lovechkin, we're just going to be checking every single game now uh, to see when he gets that goal record. All right, guys, I just sent through the San Jose Sharks game. I've been sending every single game since the Christmas break, period by period. Ovechkin is now one goal away from tying Gretzky's record, two goals away from breaking it. So what I'm thinking is why not just go in and try and score the goals myself? That way I get to see them. I think, you know, not, no one's going to be too upset about that, especially if I can get both those goals in this game against the Kraken. As obviously, I could just jump in and watch the game, but if I do that, I'm potentially watching like the next three games, uh, which is going to take forever. So I want to have some fun, score these goals with the, score these goals with the Vetchkin and see what happens when we break Gretzky's record. Look at that Kraken uh, pregame intro. It's honestly probably the nicest one in NHL 24. It is super sick. Kachuri, there's our first line center. I noticed too, I don't think I showed you guys, but with uh, Ovechkin, Kane's also tearing it up over a point per game. So uh, both the vets getting it done. They want another, you know, Stanley Cup each. Ovechkin's coming down. We're not passing. We're going for the goal, unfortunately. Get blocked there. Now on the PK right now, guys, and I realized I made a mistake. I left 20 minute periods on, <laughs> which I definitely should have turned off. It's good for like the last, you know, minute of the Stanley Cup. You can actually play through the whole minute, but. Uh, for playing a whole game, 20 minutes is just ridiculously long, especially when you're on a PK, full 
two minute PK. Ovechkin's not even out there, so I might let them score just so we can get Ovechkin back out and you know try and tie Gretzky's record. All right, guys. So like I was saying, I let them score there just so we can get Ovi back out there. All I want's the record right now. Wow, what a save from Kemper. I thought that was gonna make it two nothing. That was crazy. And we do get one there, so we're all tied up. Tom Wilson, the new alternate captain. All right, guys, the Kraken scored again. Need Ovi to tie it up. I'm realizing there's already three goals in the first five minutes. 20 minute periods, you're actually playing the whole game is way too long. Oh, Ovechkin, come on, grab this thing, go to the net. Oh my God, what a poke. Delayed penalty on us. I don't even know. Oh wow, huge save attempt again. And this is great, guys. We're on the penalty kill again. And it's a four minute power play for the Kraken. Apparently, Ovi drew blood. I didn't know that was a thing in this game, but uh, apparently it happened. And actually, guys, I'm looking at it right now. So they give Ovechkin the same penalty twice. He gets goaltender interference one and goaltender interference two. Just a different camera angle, the same play, the exact same time. All right, guys, so right now it's four on four. We're down three to one. I think this is a good chance for Ovi to pop one in here. What a hit from, uh, who was that, Bortuzzo there on Beniers. Where's Ovi? Give him the puck. Clap it. Oh, big block. I think actually Strom blocked his shot. All right, guys, so the Kraken scored one more. I tried to uh, switch lines to get Ovechkin out there. <laughs> to get Ovechkin out there, and uh, they decided to change while there was an offensive zone <laughs> face off of Seattle. Didn't end up well for us. Um, Ovechkin, I can't believe that uh, the one save there, Swing just made on him. Like, that was unbelievable. Okay, he's got the puck with the power play. Nice. Try and get it to him here. He's out front. That's got to be one. Let's go. Tied, unbelievable moment. An incredible moment in hockey history. And there you have all the boys celebrating with him. How awesome is that? It's players like these that know how to lead the charge and really change any momentum swing in the game. I mean, he doesn't need much time or space. He knows how to score. It's the reason why he's their leading scorer. Look at that guy, he's going for a little skate around the ice, even on, uh, you know, enemy soil. Pretty cool. And he's still out there, so maybe we can uh, break his record immediately after. Alright guys, we got Katray on the puck now, looking for Obi. break Gretzky's record. Oh, the goalie's down. Oh, that was a good chance. We have a power play though, we'll take that. I know there's two, Katray's wearing 15, definitely should be wearing 14, I'm not sure. Who on this team has his number? I'll have to switch that. Let's just get the full pressure. That'll just give us the best chance to uh, make sure we get this. The goalie Blake down and out. Waiting, waiting. Full pressure. I'm going to take a shot. Full pressure. All right. Good save. Give it to him again. Loose. Let's go. There we go. He did it. We have a new goal scoring king as he eclipses Wayne Gretzky. The unthinkable has happened. Incredible, James. He passes the all-time record in scoring. Unbelievable moment. Hats off to him all the way around. They're striking quickly. <laughs> Two goals game. in 50 seconds, James. Unbelievable how this team is suddenly trying to turn this game around. Yeah, when you can feel it coming, you're urgent. And that sense of urgency is putting the puck in the back of the net. Taking a little skate again, back to back. All within a minute, it's pretty funny. And that's it guys, all right, so the game's 4-3 now, it's 20 minute periods, I'm not uh, finishing this game, we're gonna let it simulate out. We got to see it though, so there you go, Vechkin, now the all-time goal leader in the NHL, how cool is that? Can they come back after all that hype? Imagine they still lose the game, I got it to 4-3. They actually didn't score one more goal, they lost 6-3, all right, so I don't feel too bad, I was about to say. I landed a couple on PK just because I was like, I need Vechkin out there, He's, he doesn't play PK, the one time he got that four minute penalty, but who cares, we got the record. Hopefully uh, they can play well here the rest of the time up to the trade deadline. And this guy's surprising, guys. The Devils just fired their head coach. They should be one of the best teams in the league at this point, so it's very surprising. Are the Jets doing it as well? That one's not as shocking. Now, Sharangovic here being offered to us by the Flames for basically a third-round pick. I'm going to say no. I feel like we can probably get better here at the deadline. We do have, again, about five million in cap space. You guys can see our record. Uh, we're not selling. We are adding. We are playing very well. But Toronto there for a second. Um, as I say that, of course, we lose three of four games, four of five games. Oh my gosh, five of six. Luckily beat the Blackhawks. Still a uh, very good record here, 35, 17, and 10. Um, after we lost the Kraken, Ovechkin broke Gretzky's goal record. 
We didn't lose another game in regulation for 10 straight games. Our 11th game against the Flyers there, we actually got shut out for nothing. Of course, you know, our old players probably, because Kuznetsov and Backstrom tore it up against us, I'm guessing. But as you guys can see here, Ovechkin's a scoring leader, 67 and 62. He's over a point per game still. In the AHL, you got uh, Cherniev, hopefully I said that right, almost a point per game. And the AHL team there is second in their division, should point out two. We're currently first in the Metro. The Canucks have more points than us. Same with the Lightning. They're the only two teams, though. So we're third in the NHL. Uh, we are going to try and add here if we can't the deadline. Um, definitely full buyer this season. Try and win that Stanley Cup. So I'll uh, we'll see who's available here on the block. Hopefully some decent players. Mackenzie Weger, uh, seven years left at 60 million. But he's an 89 overall. Solid defenseman. John Tavares. Imagine we could bring him in. I feel like Couture was kind of our big first line center get. Pavelski. I mean, the value there is not crazy because he is older. One year rental. And he's right around the money that we could afford. Montour, Anderson, Chikrin, Kunekni. Phillies just keep selling. Schmaltz, Giroux, with Toronto. I mean, we probably need defense more than we need forwards, but we'll just kind of take a look and see what makes the most sense in terms of trade value and all that stuff. I am curious too to see if Kemper's having a bit of a bounce back season. Last year, he actually went down in rating. Um, 84 overall to start, so he's gone down again, but he's playing well. 9-1-3 save percentage, 2-9 goals again. So you guys saw him in that game we play, like he was making a ton of huge saves. I've been trying to fleece us right now. Wallman, Petrie, a sixth and a fifth for Leonard in a second. In real life, Wallman's pretty good, but in this game, he's like an 81-82, so definitely saying no. And look at this, guys. Flyers offering us Travis Kunechny, who's on an expiring contract for Ryan Leonard and Iorio. I feel like Leonard's going to be a big part of this team in the future, so again, have to decline. And uh, speaking of Velsky, guys, the Flames offering him to us with Martinez and Labushkin for Ryan Leonard in a second. Um, again, not giving up Leonard, but uh, Martinez there might be worth making a trade for if he's actually still decent. Could be an upgrade on Bortuzzo. He's actually, wow, 83 overall, big upgrade. Has like no value either. I am definitely interested in doing this trade. You guys can see that defensive stats are very good. It leaves you taking over for that bottom pair spot. Should cost us next to nothing. Definitely cannot give up a draft pick this year. We have too many. Uh, next year, Islanders second rounder looks to be actually more value than Martinez. So um, let's try giving up Red Wings third next year. Plus I'm thinking one of our goalie prospects because we have quite a lot. Heal there, medium starter is our best one. Uh, with Sallow, medium fringe, plus a third. Does that get it done? It does. Okay, wow. I think we just got Martinez for pretty much nothing. And look at this. Ottawa Senators trying to trade us Chikrin for Ryan Leonard and Perez. I mean, again, I'm going to say no, but pretty crazy some of the big offers we're getting here. And now next year, guys, are trying to make one more trade with the Ottawa Senators. I figured Ovechkin is broke. Gretzky's goal record. We're going to try and win the Stanley Cup this year. Why not? Obviously, they'll gain up any of our top prospects we're going to build around in the future. So, closure is on the block. 6.4 million. Had them retaining 50%. Uh, if you guys look here, 86 overall. He's got 43 points on the year. Still solid defensively. He's in face-offs. Good playmaker. Uh, because he's 37 years old, he's got a lot lower value than he should just because of his age. So he's kind of like the perfect rental as we don't have to pay too much to get him here. Offering up a second round pick. The Islanders actually next year. Plus person who's medium top nine. He's only a 66 to 21. Definitely, you know, can afford to give him up. Values on our side. Sanders say yes. Okay, so between bringing in him and Martinez, I feel like our team's probably very poised for a cup run. Didn't even give away anybody either. So can definitely mix and match the lineup and get the best chemistry. All right, guys, so the trade deadline's now passed. We'll see whether moves got made. Let's see if there are any blockbusters. Our trade for Drew was actually the last one. Jake Wallman to Seattle. Uh, Jan Kroc there to the Islanders. Casey there to the Senators. Forcing the Canucks is a pretty big trade. Our trade for Martinez. Uh, Camp de Lake Kings for Poitras. Interesting. Um, let's see. Shrangovich to the Preds. That's actually it. So nothing too too crazy all right guys so after the trade deadline here's an updated look at the team i really do think we can make a cup run uh, with the players we brought in so first line hasn't changed ovechkin gutierre can they've been crushing it no reason to mess that up second line is now atkinson Giroux, and bertuzzi look at Giroux's stats i feel like he's a bit better offensively than strom so that's why strom's gone down to the third line center mcmichael's on the wing now wilson's there still third line right wing and the fourth line is now hathaway dowd and mantha ended up scratching the pierre here simply because he has zero goals so far he's a minus 17 um, not as good defensively as the two other guys, so we just kind of like the extra player. Also, too, uh, we scratched Bertuzzo for now after bringing in Martinez. I noticed, too, so the top four is the same. Martinez, TVR, get a plus three on the bomb pair, which is really nice. And they're both very good shot blockers. Martinez there, 96 shot blocking. TVR had the shot blocking X Factor. He must have lost it, but I uh, still got 88 there. So hopefully they can just play that good shutdown role. Obviously, no change to the goaltending. Um, power play-wise, I think power play one's the same, but I have added Giroud power play, too. He's also on the four-man power play, too. I think penalty kill as well. AHL-wise, they have lost, I think, one player we traded away, but uh, they still look pretty decent. Honestly, kind of surprised by how good the AHL team's doing this year, so hopefully they can keep it up. Hopefully the NHL team 
continues to crush it again. This might be like our last legit chance at a cup with Ovechkin. So home for the best. All right, guys, for the end of the season now, the record of 51, 20, and 11. We hit 50 wins, which is awesome. We actually finished with 113 points, which was good enough for the President's Trophy. So don't feel as bad now, but, you know, trade away our first round pick for Couturier, Atkinson, and Hathaway. HL team here finished 39, 24, and 4. No longer first in the division, but they did secure a playoff spot, which honestly is good enough, I think, for the HL team. Uh, Matthew Phillips there actually leading scorer, 60 points in 67 games. NHL team, Ovechkin had 89, 82, over a point per game. He also had 46 goals there. Pretty awesome, of course. The big thing this year, breaking Gretzky's goal record. Uh, behind him, Patrick Kane, actually not even behind him, tied with him, also at 89 points with 67 assists. So again, uh, that duo has been working quite well. Bertuzzi, 76 points on the year. That's awesome, especially since we signed him for 4 million bucks. I feel like that was a great free agent signing for us. Dylan Strom even at 68. Atkinson, 66. Giroux, 64. Barry and Carlson both had 64 points. Barry was on second pairing and second power play and still put up as many points as Carlson. That's very impressive. And I think that's what, eight players on our team. Actually, sorry, Couturier had 60. Nine players on our team. So half the skaters had 60 plus points. That's actually unreal. I'm curious to see too, um, after Giroux joined us, how'd he do? Over a point per game, 21 and 20. Yeah, cannot complain. Even Conor McMichael there playing third line. Had a bit of special team time as well. He had 51 points. Tom Wilson was just under 50 playing third line, some PK, some power play. Mantha 34 between the third and fourth line. We take that. Hathaway 24. I mean, honestly, everyone here produced very well considering the ice time that they were getting. Goaltending Kemper, 916 to 272 with 40 wins. If he doesn't jump up from 84 overall, we're getting screwed over here. I'll take a look at the AHL goalies. Rodriguez, below 900 save percentage for a 79 in the AHL. That's honestly really surprising. I thought he had decent defense in front of him too. Uh, Phillips here was actually tied with Triniev, who also had 60 points. Tuck was close, 59. Same with Miroshichenko, 58. And Kovalenko, 58. So the top five guys were all pretty much scoring the same pace. And I'm checking the entire league here, guys. Dreisaitl put up 124 points. Big year for him. McDavid, 107. You got Stammer, Kutra, Pasternak, all over 100. Caulfield was close. Same with Miller, Marner, Nuge. Jeez, so many players there. 99. In terms of goals, Pasternak, 58. Ovechkin was actually, like, what, seventh in the league this year in goals? But, I mean, 46 goals at 39 years old is still very impressive, I would say. Um, in terms of defensive scoring, Adam Fox... 94, followed by McCarthy, 93. And these two basically just run the NHL in terms of defense. Goaltending here, Demko put up 42 wins. Saber Sanchez for a starter. Looks to be Tristan Jari there with a .92. And then goals against is also going to go to Tristan Jari with a 254. So he might be taking on the Vesna. Rookie skaters here. Zach Benson with the Buffalo Sabres, 76 points at 80 overall. Wow, he's going to skyrocket in rating. Probably gain some X Factors too. Shane right there at a solid year as well. And Mitchell actually made his debut with the Flyers. Minus 14, but he had 56 points. And so now look at the entire league here, guys. As I mentioned, we take on the President's Trophy. Pretty awesome. I would say, honestly, probably more important than like that Philadelphia Flyers trade or bringing in Giroud Martinez with the fact we went out and got an A head coach. Again, like the head coach in this game cannot be understated how important they are. Uh, Seattle Kraken there was actually the 10th team to have 100 plus points. That's nuts. So if all those teams had 100 plus, there's got to be some bad teams. Oh my goodness. Atlantic is so good. Boston, 98 points, 12th in the league. And they missed the playoffs. That is incredible. Buffalo as well, 96. The Red Wings, 95. The Rangers, you don't have to feel as bad for. But like those three teams in the Atlantic, that is crazy. Um, we'll go through here and look. And last NHL is going to be the Philadelphia Flyers. Who of course, I kind of feel bad. You know, we traded them back from Kuznetsov and Oshi, But it had to be done. We won the President's Trophy. Clearly was the right move. And I think all three of those guys are on expiring deals. So they can sign somewhere else this summer. Goals four, we we're actually first in NHL, 310. I mean, we had, what, nine guys on the team with 60-plus points. It makes sense. Goals against, we we're actually the fourth-best team, tied for third with the Canucks. So a very, very good season overall. We'll get started here with the playoffs. Hopefully, we can have some luck. I do want to take a look at the Atlantic Division. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, that's just crazy. Wait, how did one of them not get a wild-card spot? Oh, because the Hurricanes at 99 just barely beat out the Bruins. I honestly think we could see something similar to this, not quite as drastic, in the Atlantic this year with like the seventh team being you know 85 plus points but uh, we'll get started here guys we got the Hurricanes here in the first round I mentioned them having 99 points they were the last wildcard team in the east and now looking at the roster they got Nietzsche, Aho, and Sveshikov in the first line that looks pretty nasty Tarasenko on the team now with Jarvis and Bunting, Donato, Kokinami, Fisher, Fast, Drury, Cousins okay so after that first line definitely drops off quite a bit defensively though they got Slavin, Pesci on the top pair Burns, Orlov, Stahl, Nikishin, Gold tiny, they still got Anderson, they got Kochkov backing him up. So, I mean, basically just forward depth where they don't look the best. I think that's kind of going to be our advantage on them. But 
in the playoffs. Anything can happen. We actually only had five more wins than them. So uh, the teams are actually more, you know, close than it would appear. First two games here in Washington. And get a 6-1 win. That's big. And a 3-2 win. All right. Up two. Had to rally North Carolina. And 4-1 loss. Hopefully can take game four. We do not. All right. 2-2. Headed back home to Washington. And 5-3 win. Have to win one of these next two games. Game six is in Carolina. <sighs> we lose it in OT. Hopefully we can keep it going here at home. This cannot end this way. One versus eight, game seven, and zero zero after one. Three to two after two, Bertuzzi, Dowd, and I thought almost Orlov. Martinez for us, Orlov Donato for them. I'm just gonna send the period, guys. We gotta have hope. And four three, Kachuri there at the game winner. Nietzsche just adds one late, but too little too late. I can't believe it was that close there with the eight seed, but luckily we're moving on. Uh, but in honestly disaster if we got knocked out in the first round and actually we got the Pittsburgh Penguins here round number two the classic rivalry I think Crosby should still be on their team same with Malkin um, Ovi there has got eight points in seven games so very solid first round for him and I look at the Penguins here guys they do still have Crosby and Malkin one two center they got Gensel and Raquel as well on that first line bottom six actually looks pretty solid I mean the fact Crosby and Malkin still both 90s at you know 38 37 respectively defense here Peterson, Latang, Carlson still on the team, Graves, Joseph, Smith. I mean, that's basically the defense now, and Smith's actually gone up in rating a bit to be that sixth guy. Jari starting, Iljevic backing him up. This is looking like a pretty good Pens team, so it's going to be a classic, like I said, Pittsburgh-Washington matchup. I think, you know, this is our year. Ovechkin broke uh, Gretzky's goal record. How awesome would it be if I could cap that off with a second Stanley Cup? First two games in Washington, of course, we have the home ice advantage. All playoffs, 3-0 win, 4-1 win. Okay, great first two games for Kemper as well. And we go to Pittsburgh and we lose both games. Cannot find a win uh, on the road yet this playoff. And we lose at home 3 2 in OT. That that could be it. We gotta go into Pittsburgh now, win game six, then come home, finish it off game seven. And down one early, Lars Eller, former player of ours. Malkin ties it up as actually Ovechkin and Drew got us a 2 1 game lead. So I'll resume the game here, guys. Very, very close. Like shock. They have a little bit of an edge, still 2 to 2. Halfway through the period. Can we hold on? Or sorry, not hold on. Can we get the win? Uh, right now it's tied. Bertuzzi, potential game winner. We're on a power play now. Uh, that was a short-lived power play. Penguins power play gets killed off. Minute and a half to go. All right, we're forcing game seven. Our first win on the road. I'm honestly nervous. I'm not going to lie. Can we win back-to-back -back game sevens to make it to the conference final? Here we go. First period. And we're down two to one. Sid with both. Bertuzzi keeps it going with a goal of his own. Four to three. What a comeback. Drew with two. And Wilson, Ty Smith for them. Again, we're just going to resume this period. Up one. They're actually out shooting us again. So Kemper's playing pretty well here. Knock on wood. You guys probably hear that. Uh, uh, Drew. That's a hat trick for Drew, I think. Wow. Huge game seven for him. What a trade deadline acquisition that was. Power play. Can we get one? Tyson Berry on the power play. Let's go. Six to three. I mean, I think we can uh, pretty safely. Anthony Mantha, seven three. Yeah. Pretty safely finish the sim. Again, Drew there had Hattie. In game seven, we honestly teed off on them there in that third period. So what a win. And in the conference final, we have the Tampa Bay Lightning. So this is going to be a good one. Tampa, of course, I believe Stamkos resigned. Giroux, are you kidding me? 19 points now in 14 games. Again, what a trade that was. So looking at the Lightning here, guys, I mean, that first line is absolutely sick. Stammer, Point, Gutra, just the top three players all playing together. They got Sherry, Sorelli's up to an 89, and Hagel in the second. Bottom six, they got Glendening, third line C. That's definitely a weakness. Potentially, we could exploit. Defensively there, they got Sergeyev, Chernik, Benning, Dehedman, Dehan, and uh, Perbix. So, they got solid top three. The next three, though, are not that great. Vasilevsky, though, is still in net. He's a 91. So, I mean, aside from Benning being on their second pair, is only an 80. Team's pretty solid. It's going to be, you know, a tough uh, matchup here for sure. But hopefully, we can get it done. I don't care if it takes seven. Like, we've played the maximum of games so far. As long as we move on, that's all that matters. So, First game here, guys, in Washington. We gotta set the tone. We're up one. Let's go to the power play goal. They actually answer back a couple Australian points to make it 2-1. And they win there. 3-2. Drew has another goal of his. Unfortunately, though, Kucherov with the game winner. Alright, guys, so here you go. Game two at home. We gotta win this one. Tie the series up. Tampa gets an early 2-0 lead. Janot and Hagel. Uh, it's still 2-0. And 3-0 now, Stammer. We're down two, and so far we've not been great on the road, so it's not looking good. Hopefully do not get swept in the conference final. Game three in Tampa, 1-1. Tyson Berry started to have a couple D-man scoring. 2-1, uh, Bertuzzi has played very well for us these playoffs. And we hold on there, Giroud with the game winner again. He's been actually probably our best playoff player. 
Gonna try and build on that game three win, guys. Game four here, still in Tampa. We're up one again. Hathaway, the fourth line. Three to one. Sandy Ovechkin, Monaghan gets their lone goal. Still a period left to play. Five to three. Wilson, Kane, Point, and Groshev for them. So somehow, some way, we actually get two wins on the road. Tie this series up. Headed home now. We're for the most part, we've been playing better, aside from the first two games in this series. So, can we get the lead? We got all the momentum after those back-to-back -back wins. And we're up 1-0. Tom Wilson, 2-1. to one. Atkinson, Hagel for them. Are you kidding me? Huge third period for the Lightning to take that 4-2. We actually outshot them 46-34. to That's just the Vasilevsky difference, I guess, in the playoffs. Dude is tough to beat. So, game 6 now, do or die. We have to win back-to-back. -back. I mean, we did the same against the Penguins. Maybe we can get it done here against the Lightning. So... Gonna go in there and win another. And down two early. Sorelli with both. Five to two. That's probably gonna be all she wrote. We'll sim the period. And yeah, seven to two. Sorelli had a four goal game. Are you kidding me? All right, so we made a good run at it. You know, I gave it our best shot. Unfortunately, fell the lightning there in six in the conference final. Also, you guys, in terms of the AHL team, they won the first round there against the Springfield Thunderbirds. Unfortunately, they lost in the second round to the Rocket. We got another head coach being fired here, and the New York Islanders fired theirs. And as you guys can see there, we actually lost the eventual Stanley Cup winner in the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, they either beat the Canucks or the Stars. I think they were tied 3-3 when I last saw it. The Flyers there picking first overall. They land Michael Misa, so, I mean, good for them. I feel like we can both be happy with our trades. Winnipeg there jumps from 4-2. to two. Montreal picking 7 via Calgary. Montreal 13 via the Rangers. So, a lot of first-round picks on the move. Luckily, ours is going to be... A, you know, very late first rounder. Drew there over a point per game. Maybe we got to run it back for one more season. Like, this team definitely gave it a good effort. We fell short there to the eventual Stanley Cup winners. So, you can just kind of say we're like the second best team this year if you want. And look at that. You actually had a rematch there between the Tampa Bay and the Dallas Stars in the Cup Final with Lightning 1-6. and six. Uh, First round, they beat the Leafs. Second round, they beat the Canadians, actually, before beating us in the Stars. And, now, and in terms of the playoff scoring leaders, it was all close to Rue. 24 points in 20 games. Like, he was trying to put this team on his back. The next closest there was Ovechkin with 16. You then had Bertuzzi, Kane, Barry all at 15. So Barry's played very well for us, especially getting him for 2.5 million. That might be the best contract on this team. Goaltending, Kemper below 900. He has gone back up to 86. He had a solid regular season, but I uh, needed more from him in the playoffs for sure. Also, two guys, I was about to look at the awards, and I saw Ovechkin actually went up in rating, which is pretty impressive for a 39-year-old to jump in rating. In this game, that almost never happens. That just shows, you know, th the fact that he broke Gretzky's goal record. They gave him a plus one. So, team awards, although we didn't win the Stanley Cup, we did take on the President's Trophy. A couple games away from winning that Prince of Wales. Individual awards here. Dreisaw got the Art Ross and the Hart. Adam Fox, James Norris. Lady Bing there goes to Pasternak. Benson there got the Calder. He teed off. Point con Smythe. Jari got the Vezna, as we predicted, along with William Jennings. Second dollar, Bill Masterton. Chicago coach, Jack Adams. O'Reilly there with back-to-back -back Selkies. Dry settled Ted Lindsay. And then Pasternak there with the Marisha Shard. And now in terms of AHL awards, guys, Milwaukee Admirals there won the Calder Cup. Individually, Shipashev actually most points back in the AHL. I uh, also had MVP. Dimidov there, most goals. Danielson, best rookie. Love seeing that as a Wings fan. Uh, Benning there, best defenseman. Not Matt Benning, though. He was on the Tampa Bay Lightning. He won the Cup. Elliott was best goalie, so he's still around. Shrankovich, MVP of the playoffs. Shibashev there also won sportsmanship. Nolan Allen, community involvement. And then Zarenko there, lowest goals against. As so our time for player retirement here, guys, I'm very curious to see, you know, does Ovechkin call it quits? Kane, one of our former players, like Baksham, Kuznetsov. It does not look like it, though. You got Paul Stastny, Derek Broussard, Cogliano, Cal Clutterbuck. Really no big names here, goaltending-wise. Staylock, Lindback. But next year, guys, we're getting to the NHL entry draft. As I mentioned, we don't have too many picks this year. So hopefully, you know, with our few mid-round picks, we can find some diamonds in the rough, some late-round steals. The Jets and the Devils have picks two and three on the block. That's crazy. We'll see. Is Michael Misa going first overall, or is it a generated player? It is Misa. James Hagens, though, also high elite, and the Jets don't want him. That's crazy. You then have, like, four medium elites there. Take a look at the gems. I don't see any at the top. All right, so this guy, Russian goalie, we've actually got two. Volshenko and Zubov, both possibly medium elites. I mean, they're gems. They probably are. Could have, like, a future, you know, Sorokin and Sergeyev here. Now, Zubov, though, is going to be, like, a late second, early third. Maybe we can move up. And then Volshenko there, we could probably get in the fourth. Banak, we have pretty much no chance to get. Um, even Gash in there being, like, a late first. Now, sorting by potential. Um, we got this Swedish goalie here, 56. Right here's another goalie that could probably meet him elite. Andronov, American, 47. So he's going to be going in the second round. There we go. Guaranteed low elite center, 123. Take that. We also got a guaranteed meme top four defenseman here in Chang. But again, he's going to be like a late second. I think we have 
two thirds and a fourth or a third and two fourths. So uh, it's gonna be tough to get all these guys. Now the Blackhawks actually have back to back late second round picks. One of them being ours, 60 over 62. So it kind of shows you guys, I think our pick's like the third last in the draft. Uh, we'll see if we can move up here from 83. We'll throw in, I don't know, what do we, what do we even cost? A fifth rounder next year as well? Blackhawks say yes. Okay, so we should be able to get both gem goalies now at this point. I uh, will sim to the pick. Carlson there, lowly defenseman. All right, round one, let's see. So Misa does go first overall. Hagen second. Barry there, high rated, but lower potential. Martin, Straka, Tuparainen, Loom, Banak. Wow, Hensler there. Eklund as well. So the top 10, all medium elite. Gavin was a high top six. And look at this guy. Zubov's literally the next highest ranked guy. So good thing we took the higher the two Blackhawks picks rather than the lower. Let's see here. And he's 60 overall medium elite. Honestly, already being a 60 as a goalie is very good. 18 years old too. Again, I'm hoping like one of these two goalies were taken ends up being a stud. And so I just sent our next pick now. It's actually the first pick in the fourth round. And look at this. Volshenko is pretty close to going. Uh, his rank there is 100. Back to back. Medium elite goalies. Let's go. He's a little bit lower rated, but uh, the fact that we got both of them. He's actually a year older, two overall lower. So... He'll probably end up being traded. That's still very, very good value in the fourth round. And now next year, guys, I'm offering the Rangers a fourth round pick next year, which is actually the Red Wings for their fourth. They say yes. The reason I want to do that was actually to land that guy who's supposed to be guaranteed low elite. Um, you might notice too, I didn't trade away anyone's rights because I'm honestly not sure what's going to go on with the team this summer. Uh, this Kent Sidhu guy, only 49 overall, but still low elite in the fourth. We take that. And our next pick here, guys, is actually at the end of the fourth round. Just got to go to our pins. We're picking 126. So I'm going to take Erat here. Guaranteed low top six. I think that's still good value. I uh, think overall still could be higher rated, but not too terrible. And next year, guys, I'm offering the Flyers Magnuson and Thomas. Uh, they're both like okay prospects. So Magnuson only 68 23. Thomas, their mean box of potential. Probably don't need them. Trying to get back a sixth round pick to take a guy we have pinned. And they rejected the trade. Maybe I throw in like a future seventh rounder as well at that point. Yeah, trade's accepted. I feel like they're getting back a lot of stuff. We also had to take back a player there just for the roster spot. So uh, that's for the first pick in the sixth round. I'm hoping the guy we made that the trade for ends up being decent. Stanislav Malkin. I mean, if he's even a quarter of the player Malkin is, uh, it's a good pick. 53 overall, and he is low top six. Yeah, that's not bad at all in the sixth round. I think uh, considering like the picks we had, this draft actually went very well for us. All right, guys, we're at the resign phase here. I'm not going to lie. The team didn't do so well this past season. I was thinking this year would be the start of the rebuild, but we might have to push back the rebuild one more year because... I mean, Ovechkin's still playing well. He went up in rating to a 91. I think Carlson might have gone up in rating as well. Kane definitely did from an 84 to 88. Uh, Katrini dropped one, which is kind of surprising. Atkinson went up a couple. Barry's up to an 86. Bertuzzi went up. McMichael's down 86. Strom say the same. Sandin's up. I mean, yeah, this team. Drew dropped, even though he, like, played awesome for us. That makes no sense. So we got $19 million in cap space, potentially... I think we got to try and run it back here, and if we can't get it done in 2026, or we see the writings on the wall, we're not going to win the Stanley Cup, try and unload and maybe get a high pick. So, Atkinson wants 4.4 for an 87. It's actually a very reasonable ask. Um, Goaltending-wise, so Kemper, Lukanen are still under contract. Rodriguez, their AHL starter. Shepard will let go. Um, Heal here could be the AHL backup. He's a 70 medium starter. I was actually looking at his stats. The one thing I really like about him is the fact that for a young goalie, he's got 82 poise, which is really high. Uh, I don't think he'll end up being better than like, you know, the two medium elite Russians we drafted, but you never know. Now, in terms of the defense, I was honestly really happy with what I saw. Uh, Bertuzzo will definitely let go at this point. Martinez could bring back bottom pair guy. Really good shot blocker, one year. If he takes like 2.25 as an 82, we'll keep him for that. Now, close your ear here, we gotta see what he wants as well. 3.2 for two years. Um, I feel like, is he still gonna be good at 39? I mean, if that's what he wants, he's 84. If he'll do like three years for 2 million, I'll do that. Hendrix appears is only an 80, he wants 1.5. One, one year, he wants even less than that. Okay, um, two years for like 1.25. There's a chance that we bring everyone back. He'll actually be in the AHL to start this season. Dowd here. So one thing I noticed, he played last year. He was a minus 13. Defensively there, he's like pretty solid. We'll see what he's asking for as a 79. 1.6. I think we could maybe find a better fourth line center than him. I mean, honestly, could just give LaPierre that chance. Hathaway even is down to a 78. Might have to re retool this fourth line because yeah, he wants 1.5. There's got to be better for an option for like, you know, an 80 with similar defensive stats. Goncaz is going to be good for the AHL team. Now, Ryan Leonard here, we finally have to give a contract to. So, he'll be in the AHL this season. Now, if we sign Atkinson here to like four and a half million, I think we'd still have like $10 million to potentially sign like a superstar forward for one year. And Atkinson did want to come back. So, I'll do like a one year, 
4.25. Let's see what he says. All right, so Giroud's coming back. That's big. Atkinson wants more money. Alexia's coming back. Martinez wants to go to free agency, so we'll have to give him more money. I think LaPierre there also wanted more. Looks like all like the prospects, though, said yes. So Atkinson will basically just give him what he wants. Martinez here will actually give an extra little bit, too, because he wants to test free agency. And then LaPierre will try... 1.4 for two years. I think that's pretty fair. All right, so Atkinson said yes. Same with Martinez and LaPierre. So everyone's coming back. We still got 11.3 million in cap space. And again, really, we're just kind of looking for like the best, you know, possible player we can find for one more run at the cup. All right, guys, we're at the free agency period here with 11 million to spend. Victor Hedman's available. I mean, talk about a one-year superstar. Hedman would kind of fit that perfectly. 89 overall there. He wants 8.2 million. I mean, imagine him and Carlson on the top pair. Like that could be deadly. For Hagee as well, wouldn't be that bad. Jacob Chikrin, 27. Behind him, you got Domi, Granlin, Olsen, Kunekni there. So Philly, definitely rebuilding. Uh, Kuznetsov, you can see, wants 5.5 million. I don't even see Backstrom. Uh, anybody else here? Not really. Just a lot of 85s. And honestly, you kind of already have enough 85 forwards. You got Burns there as well. So uh, there's Backstrom, actually, 83. Only asking for 2.7. The thing is, if he was better defensively, actually, 86D awareness, 96 check. We could bring Backstrom back, have him play fourth line center. I didn't realize he was that good defensively. I don't know how much he'd fit there, but uh, maybe play with like LaPierre and somebody else. Goal tending wise, Shesterkin's on the block. Shesterkin actually dropped in rating to 89. That's very surprising. Uh, behind him, you got Logan Thompson as the next best one. Goalie wise, we're good, but I'm just curious if there's any like medium elites. Best one's a starter, but Gaijin, 2177, medium starter. That's actually really, really good. Um, I think we just have to make him an offer because. Yeah, that's too good a goalie to get for free. A lot of other teams interested, obviously. Um, skaters here, too. Two-way forwards. Always got to do our due diligence. You can see there's actually quite a bit of high top nines. We're going to go for the younger ones. Uh, Beecher, 2479. Boston did not bring back. So he'd be a big part of the AHL team. Try and get him locked up. Three years there at 950K. Xavier Simino here has sick puck skills. I remember he was actually a really good player for us in one of the franchises. Uh, in terms of like the AHL, he absolutely dominated. So try and get him, too. Fernacci here, two-way forward, 88 D awareness. I mean, potential fourth line forward for us. Um, again, we'll try and do three years there to get them locked up if they do grow. I think after that, we can maybe use one AHL defenseman. I feel like we got to sign Thrunner Akhadiuk. I had him before, and I know I'm butchering his name. It's a tough one to say. Uh, defensive awareness, 83, 89 shot block and stick check. Thrun there, 85, a little bit lower. I think uh, we got to go with him. I hate the fact I'm signing him because I don't even know how to say his name right. But um, for AHL team, he should be a big addition. Now after that, guys, with the money we have, looking at all the players, I think Victor Hedman makes the most sense. He's 34. We get him for one year. Um, in terms of the defense, I don't even know exactly who he's replacing, but too good not to bring in. So one year is what he wants. I would give him, if we're making one more run at the cup, it's like, what does two million bucks matter? One year, 10 million. Add Victor Hedman here to our defense. Hopefully he says yes. We still have 1.3 million after that to try and get you know, some solid defensive forward. Before I actually make an offer on them, there's a trade I want to make. Anthony Mantis, who I'm trying to trade here, guys. I like him, obviously, former Red Wing, but he's down to 81 overall now. Even making 2.4 million, that's still a bit much. So I'm actually going to trade him back to Detroit so he can be back with one of his best friends, Dylan Larkin. I'm not going to really ask for much here from the Red Wings. Um, a fifth rounder looks to be pretty equal value, and they say yes. Okay, so we clear some cap space. He goes back, joins the Red Wings, and that gives us enough money now to sign, you know, a fourth line forward we might need. I think after Hedman, we could go get Backstrom. Uh, the thing is, like, if he's just going to be playing fourth line, that 2.7 million he wants is a little bit expensive. Now, Nick Foligno's available here. 80 overall, only wants 1.2 million. I think he'd be a solid, you know, veteran presence on that fourth line. I'm going to offer him 1.1. Hopefully, no one else makes him an offer yet. And I think that'd be pretty good. So, LaPierre could play center or play wing. Logan O'Connor, I love signing. He's got 87 D awareness there, wants 2.2 million. Faxa here. 87 D awareness, 90 stick check, 86 face offs. He might be the guy. He actually wants a little bit less than O'Connor. It's kind of expensive for a 79. If he does like 175, which he might if no one else makes him an offer, I think that'd be solid just to fill out that fourth line and make sure we have some solid defensive players. All right, guys, there we go. John Beecher said yes. Again, should help with the AHL team. Felino there, gonna help out the fourth line, take on a leadership role, sure. Uh, facts are rejected, not enough. I kind of figured. Simino, though, said yes. Same with Farinacci, Akadiak. Uh, Gage in there, the goalie, who's actually a sick goalie. And Victor Hedman says yes, so that is huge. Um, at this point, we actually kind of have an extra defenseman. I'm trying to think now, who's the odd man out? Honestly, guys, it looks like it's TVR, because he's one overall below Martinez. 
making more money as well. If we trade him, we have six and a half million in calf space. Check this out, guys. I was looking at Kane's stats as he went up in rating. He's now got basically perfect puck skills. 99 everything but puck control. There's a 98. 99 offensive awareness and poise. His shot's gone up. He's got 96 speed in Excel, 97 agility. I think they got to tune it so like older players don't get faster. That seems a little bit weird. Also too, he's added the injury X factor, which is definitely a waste of one with injuries turned off and shrug it off, which I don't know how he got shrug it off. Great hit recovery. That must have to do with his poise because you look at his physical stats there. Not too great. But now next year, guys, I'm trying to trade TBR in a six. The Dallas Stars for their second. I'm always, you know, good in my players. Dallas Stars made this cup final. So saying TBR to a good team. And they say yes. That's actually an awesome trade for us. Uh, this year we got a couple seconds now so if somehow this team isn't good which you know they should be good i'll be set up but there's a bit more cap room now we got five and a half million there's players actually looking at before couldn't afford now we can alex iafello 85 overall wants four million dollars very good defensive awareness there for forward at 90 87 shot block 91 stick check would kind of be expensive for a fourth liner but on a one-year deal i'm actually okay with it so we'll see if for one year we can honestly even pay him more, 4.5 million. If you playing fourth line, we'd also be playing like the first PK, maybe even a three-man PK, as he does play center sometimes. So we'll see what he says at that point. I think our team's gonna be very solid for next season. And there we go, IFL said yes. And look at this too, guys. As you can see, our team's definitely just built for one more run. Carlson, Ovi, Hedman, Kane, Atkinson, Barry, all gonna need new contracts. And most of them are gonna want more money. Especially McMichael too, I just saw down below. He's an 86 now, gonna be going up higher in rating. And yeah, he's gonna be wanting like five mil plus. Sandin two, three and a half million is 85. He'll be wanting to raise. So yeah, we got like one more run at it. Fair, very swell's gonna go up in price. And after that, I think it's definitely time for the rebuild. And now that we're about to start next season, guys, the record book should be updated with Ovechkin as the all-time goal leader. So I wanna take a look at here and see if it was. And there you go, most goals ever. Number one, Alex Ovechkin, 916. How cool is that? Also, too, guys, Ovechkin's currently tied with Mike Bossy and Wayne Gretzky with the most ever 50-goal seasons at 9. So if we can just get one more 50-goal season, he'll hold that record as well. All right, guys, so next time we'll show what the lines look like heading into next season. Again, I feel like we should still be a Stanley Cup contender again, but um, after this year, I'm not so sure. So not bring up that first line. Ovechkin and Kane crushed it together. Cherry also, I thought it was a nice fit. They get plus 5. We got McMichael in the second line, now in 87. Playing with Giroux, who's actually gone down in rating, even though last year... What do you have? Like 64 points. I feel like that's a pretty solid season, whatever. Um, Atkinson here, up and rating. Plus, he got elite edges. They get a plus two. Third line there, Wilson, Strom, Bertuzzi. I think was like pretty much our second line last year to start the season. So, just kind of shows you the depth we've added. Fourth line there, even Felino, Lapierre, Iafello. I think is very solid. Iafello, even though he's fourth line, going to be getting a lot of PK time. Defensively here now, Hedman, Carlson, their top pair. We got Barry, Sandin on the second. Sandin's down at 85. Barry's 86. Also got lead edges. Very, very Martinez on the bottom pair. They get a plus three. Gold tanning, of course. No change there. I'm going to show you guys the AHL team next. They're actually looking really stacked as well. Miro Shachenko's down at 82. So he could be on the NHL team. The thing is, like, where do you even put him? Like, there's no reason to have him on the fourth line. And then the top nine there, you have to be 85 or better. Playing with him, you got Colby Barlow is an 80, as well as Ryan Leonard, 78. So it's like a future line for us. Uh, Beecher is a 79, Kovalenko is an 80, like this AHL team, I think, yeah, every single forward is a 79 plus, except for Leonard, so, kind of nuts, defensively here, Akadiuk, Iorio is now an 81, he could also get called up if we make a trade, uh, 22, I think it's his contract year, so, maybe leave him in the AHL, help us get him on a really good price, I got Perez up to a buy one to a 78, playing with Alexiev, LeMay, Thompson, and goaltending there, Gagin and Rodriguez, both 79, so, I feel like both teams are looking really, really good, now, as I mentioned, this is probably like, you know, our last year to go for it because I actually went through and looked at all the contract asks for players I could. And we're going to be over the cap next year by about $14 million, whether that be like Kane plus a $5 million player because he wants $9 million, or, you know, it'd be not bringing back Hedman and $5 million player. We're going to lose a couple of guys. Luckily, we got a lot of good young players coming up. I'm also wondering, you know, how many of the old guys are actually going to keep their ratings. So definitely a lot of tough decisions to make. Let me know if you guys have any ideas or whatever in the comment section below. Before I end the video, guys, I'll show you the ratings for next season. We've got 98 offense, 94 defense, and 84 goaltending. So hopefully that's good enough to make one more run at the Stanley Cup. But until then, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit us up button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.